And good morning, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben, and thanks for joining us. 844-236-6010 is our number, as always, on The Bright Side. 844-236-6010. And as always, we love hearing from you. If you have questions, comments, success stories you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls in our second segment, and we'll be speaking to Brent Hunter. At the bottom of the hour, I'm really looking forward to talking to Brent. I first, uh, I first heard of Brent, uh, about Brent from his partner, I think it's his wife, uh, and she sent me some of his books. I started reading his books, and I was really intrigued. One of his books is called The Rain. He's got multiple books, by the way. Uh, his website is brenthunter.tv, brenthunter.tv. Uh, he's got multiple books, and she sent me, um, his partner sent me out The Rainbow Bridge, which is a very intriguing book, and I wanted to talk to him about that. But then I started to dive into Brent's work, and it turns out that he specializes in critical thinking. That's his thing. He calls it knowledge management, and or, or KM. And his book is called The Power of KM. And he studies and he teaches how to do knowledge management. And I was talking to him. I was talking to Brent this morning. And I was like, you know, that's exactly what we're all about. He says, you're about knowledge management? I said, no, we're about critical thinking. He's calling it knowledge management. I call it critical thinking. And I have said this from day one with uh, what's going on in the world today. And really, I've, for everything. We have to be critical thinkers. You cannot have an effective life that just falls off the table into your lap. You've got to you've got to structure it, and that uh, that structuring a good, successful, effective, productive, happy, high quality life requires the ability to critical critically think. Brent talks about a pyramid of knowledge uh, of uh, uh, of how we get information. I guess you would say the pyramid. I don't. He calls it. Uh, I think he calls it the wisdom pyramid, and it starts off with a base of data, which is just raw, and then information, which is then structured in form information, and then on top of information is the use of information, which is knowledge, and then at the top you have wisdom. He calls it the wisdom pyramid, I believe, uh, which is as fundamental as it gets when it comes to understanding information. You know, all the stuff that's going on in the news today in terms of science, so-called science, is a bad use of information. It's an inartful use of information. By the way, Brent defines wisdom as the art of knowledge, which is so fascinating to me because um, knowledge and art seem seem like they would be opposites. Science and art seem like they're opposites, but they're not. There's an art of knowledge, and they become unified as wisdom. Wisdom, to me, is knowledge made practical. I always define wisdom as using knowledge, how to effectively use knowledge. He calls it the art of knowledge. Same idea. Anyway, we'll talk to Brent about the power of critical thinking, or as he calls it, the power of KM. And then uh, we will get to, and also the Rainbow Bridge, his website, brenthunter.tv. Lots of good stuff there. And then uh, he's got a lot of YouTube videos, too. We'll talk to him in our third segment and get your calls in our uh, next segment, 844-236-6010. So uh, one of the things Brent told me about, and we're going to explore this, is this idea of coming to stability. And when he, when he talked about coming back to stability, uh, and he has an interesting technique for getting there. Uh, actually, he told me about it. I found it very life-changing. But getting back to stability is something we really want to do in this crazy, crazy time. I don't like dating uh, the programs that I do, because these programs stay up for years and years and years, but today is the day after, uh, and there's going to be a lot of, there is a lot of angst, and there's a lot of anxiety, and there's a lot of stress, and there's a lot of worry, and there's a lot, it's so important now more than ever to activate the parasympathetic nervous system, the calming nervous system, the rest and digest nervous system, the relaxation nervous system where we grow, where we repair, where we accumulate information, where we make good decisions. All of that occurs at the prefrontal cortex, the front of your brain. All of that occurs at the front of your brain when you're safe. We have to learn to feel safe. That's one of the cool things about critical thinking is when you analyze data, you automatically go into safety mode because you're activating the the, the prefrontal cortex. You're leaving the reptilian brain simply by critically thinking. You take energy away from the amygdala in the back of your brain, the reptilian brain, the so-called reptilian brain, the fight-or-flight brain, simply by critical thinking. And you take and you redirect blood flow, you redirect electricity, you redirect energy to the prefrontal cortex by critically thinking. I'm not talking about 
I'm not talking about thinking in circles. I'm talking about using good thinking skills to get to wisdom, going up the hierarchy from data to information to knowledge to wisdom. So critically think, critical thinking can help, and being still can help. Learning to be still, Pascal, Blaise Pascal, the famous mathematician philosopher said, all of man's problems can be, and I'm paraphrasing here, all of man's problems can be uh, reduced to his inability to sit in a room alone and by himself. You ever notice how people are always doing stuff? You know why we're always doing stuff? Let me tell you why we're always doing stuff, and almost everybody always does stuff. Can't stay still. Hardest things for people to meditate or go to sleep. We have an insomnia epidemic. We have a meditation, a, a lack of meditation epidemic that's related to it. We have a doing epidemic. And all of it is related to an inability to sit still. And the reason we can't sit still is because we're operating, as Thoreau said, with a baseline level of desperation and anxiety. All of us have, we're born into the situation, unless we meditate or, we're, you know, I should say all of us, but the vast majority of us, unless we've worked on this, are operating with low levels of angst. And as soon as we stop moving, all that angst comes out. As long as we're moving, as long as we're moving around, we don't see the angst. That's why you probably know people that always got to be doing stuff. Probably, you know, many of us are like that. I'm like that. Unless I m really motivate to sit still. At this point, I practice it for so long. But I understand what that is. I guarantee you, people who are always feeling like they're doing have to do something. They're the same people who can't sleep, and they're the same people who can't meditate. So learning to be still, and that requires being able to do the one thing that human beings hate to do. You know what that one thing that human beings hate to do, and everything is a derivative of? We hate to feel uncomfortable. We don't like any kind of discomfort. Now we can decide, determine what discomfort is. I think it's this low level of fear and the, you know, this uh, survival thing. But we don't like the feeling uncomfortable. We'll do anything to not feel uncomfortable. We'll move from the time we get up in the morning to the time we get up at night so we don't have to feel uncomfortable. Because as soon as we have, think about our credit card bills or our relationships or our jobs or our family, whatever, politics, we start to feel uncomfortable and we don't like feeling uncomfortable. Imagine how powerful you could be if you could deal with feeling uncomfortable. And in fact, that is one of the best exercises you could ever be, and it will give you psychic power, psychological power, the way lifting weights will give you physical power. Being able to practice feeling uncomfortable without running away from it will allow you to meditate, it will allow you to fall asleep, and it will allow you to relax. You want to learn to feel uncomfortable, and the best way to do that is to hack into your parasympathetic nervous system. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Brent and Hunter coming up in our third segment. We'll get your calls next segment, 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. All right, we're back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll have Brent Hunter at the bottom of the hour, and we'll get your calls this segment. There's so much I want to talk about when it comes to fats. Uh, I did get a little, a little, uh, took a little digression there because of uh, all the stuff that's going on in the news today, and, and learning to a activate the parasympathetic nervous system is really important when it comes to health when it comes to growth, when it comes to repair, just like fats are important for growth and repair and when it comes to health, so is uh, the parasympathetic nervous system because we can't utilize our fats correctly, we can't utilize our biochemistry correctly if we're constantly sympathetic. The human body is not designed to be constantly sympathetic, but we have designed an environment, a political environment, a government environment, a legal environment, and most importantly, a media environment Media is just a fascinating word. I'll talk about that here in a second. We've designed an environment that is almost intentionally formulated to get us sympathetic. And that's especially true about what's called media. Media comes from the word middle. A media, media is so evil, potentially, and actually. But it doesn't have to be. Although I don't even know. Media is the middle ground, the middleman. It takes information and then design, turns it any which way it wants for its own manipulative techniques and gives it to you and me. That's called media. That's why they call it the media, the middle. It's the middleman of information. 
turn off the news. If you are freaking out about anything, turn off the news. Please, please, please understand the news is designed to make you feel freaked out. And we're addicted to the news because we're addicted to the freak out. That's why all this fear is everywhere. We're addicted to it because it spikes our cortisol and makes us feel alive. The trick is to feel alive without, uh, to feel alive consciously, to feel alive with intent. That brings you joy. Feeling alive with content, with intent brings you joy. Feeling alive with fear makes you freak out. And most of us are feeling alive through fear, not through joy. If you feel alive through fear, guess what's going to happen? You're going to be scared. You'll be in fear. You'll be sympathetic. Your blood pressure will go up. You'll be at more risk for cancer and viral infections. That's how you know it's a scam. This whole vi- and by the way, we're going to be talking about this whole thing tomorrow with our guest Dylan Howard. Um, I don't want to get too political here, but you can tell that there's something wrong because the fear that's being induced is going to make you more susceptible. The fear that's being induced is going to make you more susceptible. Do you know you wouldn't know anything about what was, who was running for president or what they were saying or what kind of lies somebody was telling or what kind of character somebody had or whatever it was, and you wouldn't know anything about infections, you wouldn't know anything about viruses if you didn't watch the news. It's news created. It's media created. And it's because we don't understand knowledge, how to run our brains, how to run our minds, how to run our nervous systems. Our nervous system, by the way, is also media. Media is like an external nervous system. We have given our power of our nervous system, of our ability to sense what's out there, to talking heads, to television, to other people. We've deprived ourselves of our personal authority and sovereignty to decide what is so. And we've been bred to do that way by, for generations. This program is about waking up. Opening your eyes, your your not just your eyes that, that see the physical world, although those too, but your psychic eyes, so you can see what's out there in terms of um, information, in terms of belief systems, in terms of programming. It's a really cool book called The Biology of Belief, and it's not that biology belief. There's a, it's that's a great book too by Bruce Lipton. There's another book called The Biology of Belief, which literally talks. The Biology of Belief, Bruce Lipton, is more theoretical, or more big picture, I should say. And this other book, which I'm looking for as, I, as I'm here, I can't seem to find it. I was reading it this morning. Uh, it, it's about literally how our biology forms the structures of our, our physiology. And as Freud said, physiology is destiny. Physiology or anatomy is destiny. How our body is structured is, how our, is going to be our destiny. And we control that with our beliefs our thoughts about what is so. So activate that parasympathetic nervous system by using critical thinking, by slow, deep breathing, by muscle relaxation, by, by massage, by meditation, 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 which is nothing more than watching how your mind works, by the way. All right, so I was, there's so much I want to talk about here with fats. I, I touched on this idea of lipopolysaccharides a couple days ago, these LPSs that are responsible for all chronic degenerative diseases. The best way to lower your LPS, lipopolysaccharide level, immune system activator, is with calorie restriction or fasting or intermittent fasting if you just want to do it chronically. This is from the Journal of Neuroinflammation. Intermittent fasting attenuates lipopolysaccharide-induced neuroinflammation and memory impairment. I have said this for decades. And now people are are listening, but when I started saying this, people would say, that's silly. Alzheimer's disease, dementia, memory problems, cognitive issues, they're not Prevagen deficiencies. They're signs of neuroinflammation in the brain, secondary to stuff that's getting in the blood, i.e. lipopolysaccharides, LPSs, little fragments of bacteria, little pieces, the membranes of bacteria that have been partially digested sometimes, sometimes the whole bacteria has gotten into the bloodstream through a leaky gut. Leaky gut. They call it leaky gut syndrome. And syndrome, by definition, means a bunch of things that happen all together. Like metabolic syndrome is fatty liver disease and hypertension and cardiovascular disease and neuropathies and obesity. It's like a syndrome that covers a whole bunch of, of health issues. Leaky gut syndrome 
has a bunch of health issues too. And you know what those health issues are? Everything. The health issues that are associated with leaky gut syndrome are everything and anything that can go wrong in the body. Everything that goes wrong in the body can be tracked to the soil of the body. The soil of the body is the intestine. That's where everything grows from. That's where the bacteria, bacteria proliferate from, I should say. From the intestine. So working on the intestine is so important. And if you, you just know it, you know, you'll know it. In the book, The Walls Protocol, Dr. Terry Walls talks about it, curing her MS through fasting and through calorie restriction. She doesn't say exactly why, but this is why. Because of this lipopolysaccharide-induced neuroinflammation. And if you want to know about a horrible, horrible health challenge or disease, Google and do some research on multiple sclerosis. It's awful, and it can be backtracked to LPS. And the next time the doctor says, oh, it's in your genes, or you're, you know, you're, if you believe it's in your genes, and that's just how it is, and you just have it, study LPS, study lipopolysaccharides, LPS, and neuroinflammation, nerve inflammation. Also true about mental health issues. LPS and mental health issues for older folks. And Parkinson's, by the way, also. All right. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we will be back with Brent N. Hunter. His website is Brent N. Hunter, or BrentHunter.tv. And uh, his books are The Rainbow Bridge, The Rainbow Bridge, The Rainbow Bridge 2, Park Odyssey, The Power of KM. Uh, a really interesting quote book, which his uh, partner was, was kind enough to send me, called Nuggets of Wisdom, which is really it's something I've wanted to do myself for a long time, is to write down a bunch of quotes. Anyway, we'll talk to Brent Hunter about critical thinking and his book, The Rainbow Bridge and The Power of KM, when we come back from this break on the bright side. Don't go away. We're back on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We are on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, and 10 to 11 Central Time, and 24-7 on the archive page at benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the U.K. for setting that up with a search engine for searching various topics or shows you may have missed. We also have our an archive page at brightsideben.com and also listen live link and listen live at pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also check out our blog post, news stories, and lots of good health information on all our websites. And don't forget to take a look at our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, water, silicon, vegetable oil, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want, all formulated by myself in my compounding pharmacy for healing wounds, healing wounds and beautification of the skin. Everything we want from a beauty product is really about healing the skin. And that's why when it comes to skin care, when it comes to take care of the body, health and beauty go hand in hand. True skin health products, true skin care products are health products, not just skin, skin products. And thus, our 1,400 four- and five-star reviews at truthreviewed.com. You can purchase Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, and our review page is at truthreviewed.com. All right, I'm really, really looking forward to our guest. Brent N. Hunter is a very prolific writer and a, a sage, a wise man. I spoke to him this morning. He had, it just blew, blew my mind just talking to him for, for five minutes. Uh, we're going to talk about a couple of his books here. One is called The Rainbow Bridge, which is um, a very, very fascinating idea, a very fascinating concept, and also The Power of KM, Knowledge Management. As you all know, we speak a lot about critical thinking on this program, and, uh, and uh, I felt like from talking to Brent. He is my brother from another mother, and I appreciate that. Please welcome to the Bright Side, Brent Hunter. Hey, Brent. Hi, Ben. Good so, morning. Good morning. I'm so great, grateful to have you on. So before we even get going, there's so much I want to talk about. Um, you have this, like, this unbelievably elegant and very powerful um, technique, I guess you could say, that you talk about for, for starting off interviews, meetings, group sessions, et cetera. Will you share, some, share with us, and, and then we'll, we'll partake? Absolutely. Um, and rather than talking about it, I think I'll just do it, and then uh, I think it'll be, become readily apparent. I call this the 10 seconds of silence practice. And I'd like to offer every one of us right now the opportunity to unite by sharing 10 seconds of silence to re by reflecting on our right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and the importance of equality, inclusion, and fairness. 
Let the 10 seconds begin now. Nice. And thank you. Thank you. You know, you can feel, when you told me, I, I really got what you're saying when you told me, and you can feel how things calm down just in 10 seconds. Yeah, it's, it's pretty profound. I, I was meditating one day thinking about, um, you know, sometimes you have to say something really amazing and brilliant in order for people to pay attention and to come together and to unite uh, and to share some, some kind of peace and harmony with one another. Um, but it, it occurred to me sometimes the opposite is true, that uh, rather than saying something amazing, um, sometimes the most important thing is to say absolutely nothing at all. And so in that 10 seconds, we can come together and, um, and, and use this, this practice for a number of different reasons and different purposes in a couple different ways. So uh, as I was mentioning earlier, I, I use this practice uh, in the work environment where I work right now. And um, we do the 10 seconds. We, we, we have a, a lot of things to cover in our meetings. So generally, we just do the 10 seconds of silence. I thank everyone, and then we begin our meeting. Um, however, the 10 seconds of silence practice can also be used in so many different other ways. It can, we, can, we can use it in the workplace uh, to begin uh, meetings maybe that are especially sensitive. Um, Ooh, uh, that, that's, you know, very, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah really important topics like yeah. that um, starting wow. out. But we can also use it um, in our personal lives as well. So a lot of different uh, yeah. ways to apply this. Uh, just with your spouse, just on a date? Just, uh, yeah. you know, instead, like, like, I think that's what grace is actually supposed to be probably, you yeah. know, is, <laughs> right. Instead of just mouthing, you know, just like trite or, or uh, memorized statements or something. So uh, I want to, we don't have a lot right. of time. So I want to dive into this idea first and foremost about this knowledge management, which is just, I love the way you say that I call critical thinking. I'm not sure if it's exactly the same thing. You can help me with that maybe, but the idea of knowing how we know or at least working with what we know, because most of us just know what we know, and that's it, right? But we never, like, how do I know that? Where did I get that from? Is it really true? I don't know if you've heard of Byron Katie. Have you ever heard of Byron Katie? I have, yes. So, I, I'm so, not too, I haven't read her thoroughly, but yeah. She I've has heard. a thing called the questions. You ask questions whenever you're feeling something. You say, how do I know that's true? You know, mm. who am I when I think that's true? What, what is it possible that that's not true? You know, there's, there's all these questions you have to ask before you form a belief, but we don't do that. And that costs us, don't you think? Yes, exactly. I especially, I, yeah, exactly. It's so important. I mean, it's it's so important that it it's almost ridiculous that we even have to talk about it. Yeah, but, right. <laughs> you know, but but it is absolutely important. We do have to think. You know, we, we're given heads and hearts, both of them, and uh -huh. we, we have to use both of them. You know, we have we we have this amazing capability of thinking and processing information and knowledge and understanding, like you said, you know, basically using our critical thinking skills mm. to determine whether or not information and knowledge is, is, is even accurate, and if it is, what to do with that information and knowledge. So, where, very powerful. Where, where does organized religion fall into this? And when I say organized religion, I'm not just talking about the kind of religion that you go to church for. I'm talking about organized religion of the state organized religion of any authority, organized religion of the medical model, organize, uh, organized religion, there's a lot of, or even organized religion of science, if you know what I'm saying. Where does organization and institutions and status quos, how does that play into this idea of us not having an ability to critically think or not, us not critically think? So, so just to be clear then, Ben, when, when you say organized religion in these different areas, are, when I hear you say that in different areas, I'm thinking Institutions. Myself, Institutions. institutions or, or yeah. dogmas? Is dogmas. Well, they run on dogmas. They require dogmas. Like, I think dogma might be more analogous to the opposite of critical thinking. But the states and these organizations, these institutions are maintained by not having us critically think. Dogmas. Yes, yes. It, it, it's just, it's so pervasive, right? Uh, we, right. We, we need to be thinking about everything that's, that's going on, our personal lives, our our you know organizational lives, our, our lives as communities, um, certainly you know like the way our governments are structured and mm -hmm. decisions that our governments are making at the local, national, and uh, international levels, um, and and you know at the root of it, as as you say, is is thinking is thinking. Lack. Yeah, and and that's part of the problem right now is the lack of thinking. We and, think we're thinking. We think yeah. we believe we're thinking. Correct. But we're yeah, not actually, we're reacting. We're not really yeah. thinking. 
Exactly. In many cases, you know, I think a lot of us are thinking, but there are a lot of us that are not thinking. We're just reacting. You know, we were just right. uh, saying things because we heard somebody else yeah, say yeah. it, yeah. and it sounded good. It sounded yeah. like it was an informed, you know, comment or whatever, so we just repeat it. Right. Um, there's a lot of that happening. But, yeah, I think there's a huge need for, 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 for all of us, really, to step back and to, um, as you were saying, you know, about Byron Katie, you know, think about what we're thinking about. Yeah, think and, about and what we're thinking about. And ask ourselves really important questions. Yeah. And I love how you say the power of CAM can literally change the world, because I 100% believe that. And we'll talk about that when we come back from our break, if that's okay, Brent. And then we'll get in your book, uh, The Rainbow Bridge. Brent N. Hunter, his website, brenthunter.tv. And he's got all kinds of good information and some wonderful books. We'll be back with more Brent Hunter on the bright side right after this. Okay, we're back on the bright side. We're talking to Brent Hunter, his website, brenthunter.tv. We're talking about the power of KM. He's got multiple books, The Power of KM, Nuggets of Wisdom. And we'll talk about the Rainbow Bridge here in a second. Hey, something occurred to me real quick, Brent. Um, when you're doing this 10 seconds of silence, is eyes closed or eyes open? Because they, they have two different kind of effects, I think. Does yeah, it matter? that's a great yeah, uh, great question, Ben. It, it's really either either way, whatever people are comfortable with. Generally okay. speaking, uh, in the work environment, I usually have my eyes open because I'm on yeah. video and I have a whole lot of people surrounding me, and you know, it's an individual decision. Seems like if your eyes are open, you'll be more able to navigate the eyes open world as opposed to the eyes closed world. Like it'll it, make it, it'll be more powerful in the eyes open world. No. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think it just probably works differently for different for people. For different people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. so uh, I want to get into The Rainbow Bridge because it's a super cool book, but just real quick, if we could finish up with uh, The Power of KM. Uh, talk real quickly about your, your uh, pyramid, the Wisdom Pyramid. I, I hadn't heard that before. I think that's yours probably. Sure, the, the, the Wisdom Pyramid. It's, it's actually not mine, but it is uh, a very powerful, very important concept in knowledge management, and it basically says that there's this pyramid, uh, it's four layers. At the base of the pyramid is data. Above that layer is information. Above that layer is knowledge. And the top layer in this pyramid, the wisdom pyramid, uh, is wisdom. Mm. And, and so basically when you put data into context, it becomes information. Mm -hmm. and, and knowledge um, is understanding that's gained through experience. And wisdom... <laughs> is the art of knowing. Love it. The, the distinction it. there is between when you understand something with your rational mind and when you mm -hmm. know something to be true. Mm -hmm. And this art of knowing kind of juxtaposes two separate brain hemispheres. It's like a unification, like art and knowing in a way, like knowing being knowledge, like science and art being like right brain, like you're unifying. There's a unification in there. Do you think? Um, well, I think there certainly could be um, when 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 you have that as an intention to unify the knowledge and the wisdom layers like that. The knowledge um, and the art. The knowledge and the art. Art being like this elegant. This uh, uh, there's no way really to describe art, right? It's totally right brain. But knowledge is like cut and dry. And when you yeah. can work with knowledge in an artful way, sort of that's wisdom, right? Is that what you're saying? Um, well, maybe maybe the word art is um, maybe adding some some confusion here. Basically, um, knowledge is understanding. Wisdom yeah. is knowing. Knowledge Und is understanding. Knowledge yeah. is understanding. Wisdom is knowing. Yeah, and when you and knowledge is understanding. So when you understand something, it's a mental thing in your head that's happening in your head. Got you it. say, ah, oh, two plus two, that's four. I get it. I understand. Got it. That's when you mentally, rationally, logically understand something. Wisdom knowing. is when you know something. Like in your gut. Like in your, in your body? Gut. Yeah, in, in your gut or in your body. When, when you like know your it, name. So for example, like you know like your name. rainbow. Yeah, like you, you know, know your, your name. Brain. Somebody, yeah. Nobody can come along and say, Ben, yeah. your, your name isn't Ben. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. You, you know that it is, right? Same thing wow. with a rainbow. If you've seen a rainbow before, you know it. Then you know that they exist, right? You may not know that it takes a 42 degree angle of refraction mm -hmm. and that it needs to be water in the air, and you may but not know. Nobody can tell you it didn't all exist. Other things. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. So that takes us into the Rainbow Bridge, which is a really cool idea. And I've heard of the Rainbow Bridge in like uh, esoteric, I think Tibetan Buddhism or there's some kind of Eastern mysticism where they talk about the Rainbow Bridge. So you have an interesting take on the Rainbow Bridge, though, and it involves, it involves uh, like esoteric wisdom. But it, there's a connection between inner peace and world peace there. Can you talk about that a little bit? Sure, sure. So, so the, the concept, the basic concept behind the Rainbow Bridge is that 
it, it is a it is a concept that exists all around the world in different cultures. Um, that it's a bridge to the other side, you know, that it's a bridge to a better world. Um, many people have heard about the Rainbow Bridge in terms of their pets passing away and the pets are waiting for them on the other side of the Rainbow oh, wow. Bridge. You know, there's a lot of different um, interpretations of the Rainbow Bridge. So the book that I wrote um, uh, attempts to bring together those multiple interpretations around the world. Um, and and it, what it also does, though, and this is the super important part, is that uh, in the Rainbow Bridge, um, it illuminates the common ground in the world's major wisdom traditions. And that is super profound, right? So it's not about religion. It's not about dogma. Uh, but it's about universal spirituality. It's about spiritual principles. It's about universal principles that apply to every single person. And these universal principles can be used uh, to help us indi as individuals and as, as people uh, achieve a sense of inner peace and, and calmness and tranquility going on inside of our own minds and hearts and in physical bodies, no matter what's going on in the world around us. So these universal principles can be used uh, to, to, you know, help bring about a sense of inner peace, but they also can be used to help bring about uh, changes in the world around us, and specifically uh, the, the concept of creating a bridge to a better world, uh, a bridge to a world that is based on harmony and cooperation and collaboration. And so this, this book lays out how we can use these universal principles in our own lives, but also how we can use them in, in the world to create uh, literally a better world, a world that will work for a great many people. Um, and it's, I do have very specific information in the Rainbow Bridge, including a 14-point roadmap or framework uh, uh, for world peace. So I'm, I'm really excited about it and um, happy to share it with your listeners today. Is this uh, now you have these, these multiple, these 14, I think there's 14 you said? Uh, yeah. Uh, 14 universal principles. A couple things. First of all, um, the first one the, is the golden rule, right? Is it first because it's first, or is it first? Is it? I mean, do we read anything into the order of these principles? Or are they all? Is it? Is it? They're all equally important. Um, I, I think all of the principles are equally important. Um, however, the first and the last principles. Um, so w what we're talking about now is the principles themselves, and, and not right. the roadmap, right? So there right. are sixty universal principles. The first one that you just mentioned is is the golden rule or the platinum rule, um, which is you know do not do unto others as you would not want done to yourself, right? I do have that listed as the first universal principle because I believe it is so profound. And if people all around the world were to follow that, mm -hmm. I mean, the whole world would really be a hugely different place. So so I do have that listed there. But um, and, and the last one is life is a dream. I have that in the, in the very it. end because it's yeah. also extremely important and powerful, and it's a concept that's found in all the world's major wisdom traditions. Yeah. And the, the important part of the life is a dream concept and the principle is that we can awaken in this mm -hmm. lifetime. Like a dream. Yeah. In in the daytime dream of of Correct. life, not just in nighttime, but yes, exactly. We could be exactly. lucidly awake, like lucid waking. Have you exactly. heard of this concept, like lucid yeah. waking? Yeah, the, the dream. I love the dream metaphor. I work with that all the time. That's an amazing, amazing metaphor. And lucid dreaming is an amazing metaphor too. Yeah. Um, you know, it strikes me that there's a relationship between the power of KM and your universal principles. They're not like separate. Like KM yeah. will take you to the universal principles, won't it? Thank you. But perfect. Exactly. And, and the, the relationship between the Rainbow Bridge and the Power of KM is that, so we just talked about the Wisdom Pyramid, right? So the, the top of the Wisdom Pyramid is wisdom. And the Rainbow Bridge is all about wisdom. Uh, but not just any wisdom. Um, yeah. It's universal wisdom. That's yeah. common fundamental. to every single one of them. Yes, exactly. It's fundamental. Exactly. It, it's interesting how when you get right down to the really deeply philosophical roots of all the religions and not the like the you know the soil of it rather than the flower or the tree or the mm -hmm. or the leaves when you get to the soil of it it's all the same soil no yes it's very very much the same uh, i i agree and and you know it's so it's so easy to find differences in everything i think in 
what's yeah. super important for us to do to in these these troubled times is to focus on what's common, to focus on the common ground yeah, that exists beautiful. between all of us. Yeah, beautiful metaphor. Okay, so we only have a minute, and this is a crazy time, like you just said. Like, talk to people out there who are just feeling angst, anxious, can't sleep, worried, depressed, grieving. You know, all these horrible emotions, or at least uncomfortable emotions, we'll say, that come up in this time. How can we use the? Just in a nutshell, what can we do? Well, I think um, a couple things. One is to just close our eyes and to be silent, right? To, to just uh, take time every day to sit in silence. It's so important uh, for our own peace of mind and, and sanity. Um, but the other thing is to, to understand that from some big picture perspective that everything is happening exactly the way it's supposed to be happening. Mm. Everything is perfect. Yeah. Now, we may not understand how mm-hmm. or why on earth it could possibly be perfect, right. but it doesn't mean it's not perfect. Right. And so our task is to find the silver lining. Our task is to focus on the bright side, as, as you do. Oh, that's, um, awesome. that's what we should do, is to focus on, on the, the, the silver lining. And there, there are many, many silver linings that are happening, especially the most important one right now that I just want to mention is that we are all united much more than we can even begin to imagine. We just right. can't see it yet. Thank you so much, Brent. That's awesome. Awesome vision. Thank you for what you're bringing to the world. Thank you for your books. Uh, Brent and Hunter. BrentHunter.tv. Uh, BrentHunter.tv. Thanks, Brent. Hang on the line. I want to say goodbye, okay? Thank and that's you so all much, the time we. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you, Brent. I am Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.